Hey, it's so much fun to see you here again, and it is Russian man who brings value through my own experiences. My name is Igor, and I learn English, and I want to move to America, and I'm Russian, by the way. And uh, we will watch today one video, one viewer recommended it to us, and name of the viewer, Horrid. Yes, thank you for him, and you can recommend your own things to watch. This stuff will be maybe about Russia, he said that something about Russia will be, it will be maybe funny, and uh, it called the Moth Presents Louis K. Moth Award Acceptance Speech. Interesting name, it's kind of like a award, award of music, but maybe in comedy way. Let's watch it together, maybe I will understand something, maybe we will not, but uh, need to try it, because uh, if you didn't even try, you will not know. I don't know what to say, how to say it correct. If you try, you will understand. Can you do this or not? If you don't try, it means that you can't at all. Okay? Let's go. So much pleasure that we present the 2015 Moth Award to Mr. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Thank you. I, uh, I really appreciate that. Um, I mean, I really like people, and I even think that I'm pretty cool sometimes. But uh, I really, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here because I do love uh, the moth, and I listen on the radio all the time, and it kills me every time. I, it's nice to know that you can reliably cry by listening to something, you know? <laughs> Always makes me cry. I don't want to thank the people who told their stories, the kids and all these people, because... I think um, stories is the only thing that you have that's really only yours. A lot of people have money and uh, other possessions or ideas, but your stories are the only things that you're the only one who has them. And then just by telling them, then everybody else has them. So that's why I think stories are great. Uh, so they asked me to tell a story, and I, I told a few to my daughter, and this one she just said, yeah, tell that one. And I think it's mostly because she wanted me to stop. It was the last one. She's like, just tell that one. Can I go back to what I was doing? But anyway, I went to Russia in 19, no, 2000, no, when the fuck was it? Yes, 1994. I went to Russia, and it had just become Russia again. It was the Soviet Union until really that year, everything started to crash down. And at the time, I was a writer for the Conan O'Brien show, and I had written there for two years and I was burnt out and I didn't want to do it anymore. So I went to the head writer and I said, I have to quit because I think I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown. And he said, take two weeks off and we'll pay you for the two weeks. And I said, okay, I'll do that. So I had nowhere to go and I thought, maybe I'll go to Russia. <laughs> I really don't know why. I can't really explain any decisions I made then. Because I have children now, so you don't have to search when you have children. You're not like, oh, what, what could I do to enhance my life? <laughs> You're just sort of compelled to do whatever comes at you at a certain age in life. But I was in my 20s. I had no wife, nothing. I had no girlfriend even. I just was this guy, and I had money from a TV job. And so I just said, I'm going to go to Russia, because when I was a kid, I used to read Russian novels, and I loved them, and I would open all the windows so I would be cold, and I wanted to be cold like they were. <laughs> like it is uh, north, north from uh, Game of Thrones, like winter is coming, winter is coming. <laughs> so I just decided I'm going to go, and also somebody told me that the wall had just come down in the Soviet Union and that Russia was a really crazy place at the time. So I said, I'm going to go there. I speak no Russian. I can't even look at the alphabet and understand what I'm looking at. Look, can you, can you guess what is it? Can you guess what is it? Ah, oh, by the way, no, 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 another, another way. Here, read. What is it? Can you guess? Can you guess? What is, what's the Russian language is here? And what's the Russian language is here too? Yes, it is all Russian language. Yes, it is written with Russian. And this knock knock heart. Heart it is this thing. And how to make friendship with uh, like a fast beating 
Ogan. And what will be if you will not do friendship with him? And uh, you maybe have some kind of uh, books in your thing, in your life. And it is, do you know what it is? It is uh, John Ronald Ruel Tolkien. And it is a Fellowship of uh, the Ring. And it is, look, can you guess? It is a Russian writer. If I will do this, you maybe will guess it. It is Alexander Pushkin, Eugen Anegin here yes we have so big amount of books here need to do kind of how to say it organization here <laughs> let's continue there's no place more foreign to me than russia so i went i went to moscow which is when you land in moscow it's just forest exactly a city in the middle of just forest exactly it it's true I don't know how in your country, but uh, in Russia, in Moscow, it's true in almost every airport. Maybe he landed in Demodedovo airport, because we have uh, three main airports and plus one additional extra in Moscow. And uh, they are Vnukovo, Demodedovo and Shermetivo. It is through different uh, airports. And he maybe landed to Demodedovo, because it is the most forested. It's terrifying. And as the plane goes down, you're like, no, 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 I didn't want to really do this. <laughs> and the, the whole time there, I couldn't fend for myself. It was already a country that was just broken in pieces. And the weirdest things happened to me there. And I just, they just became normal after a while. Like I went, I was in a restaurant and a waiter came up to me, not my waiter. And he said, Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I said, uh-huh. He said, Coca-Cola, and I said, sure. I don't drink Coca-Cola, but I had learned by that point to just don't, just go, just do what they're asking to do. Sure. So he went to the kitchen and he got a Coke and a can and he handed it to me and he said, five dollars, because only dollars were worth anything there. And I said, okay, on my bill. He said, no, five dollars, me now. So I gave him five dollars and he put on his coat and he left. He just sold me a Coke on the side and then quit his job. So those are the kind of confusing moments I was having. It is only accident. I think that this accident, maybe it was in Soviet Union, but here is, uh, we don't have this so much. We have kind, kind of burglars, but uh, they are everywhere. And it is kind of 0.01%. Uh, of all people, but 0 0.10, uh, 0 0.01, it is uh, one time in uh, 10 thousands. It means that it is kind of frequently. Every 10 thousands person that you will find in, on the streets, it is a burglar, maybe. Okay, one, 0 0.001. Yes, one to one hundred thousands. It will be more. Truth. There. And I couldn't talk to anybody, and I was so lonely. It's difficult. I mean, I was alone, and I just sit in the room, and go, okay, that was a really fucked up day. I hated that day. <laughs> and I tried to watch television, and the TV was American shows like Dynasty. And the way they translate, they didn't have, uh, the, what they did was the sound is a little down and there's just one man saying all of the dialogue in <laughs> over the whole show. He said it's not in Russian, he only imitated Russian right now. I was there for two And uh, one interesting information that uh, in 1990s, uh, dub dubbed uh, speech was this way with uh, with uh, I don't know what's the name of it it's a specific tool you use it for your uh, for your clothes when you hang it and you use this type of clutch yes catch I don't know what's the name of it clutch and uh, after that you can speak this Columbia picture presence it is our new show let's watch it like this you start to speak weeks and uh, in russia it was in uh, 1990s this type of movie when i was born i was born in uh, 1997 
and uh, it was I remember so big amount of movies that we were speaking like Columbia Pictures представляет. I said it in Russian language, Columbia Pictures presents. And it just was crushingly I had made no contact with anyone. And then one day I went into the subway. Now, if you've never been to Moscow, the one thing I learned there is that well the streets are very I can't gesture with this thing. <laughs> It's beautiful, but I can't keep punching you in the face with a big white fist. Okay. <laughs> the streets in Moscow during the Cold War, they were made wider so that they could uh, have missiles go down the middle of the street for the parades. And if you go there, you'll exactly. find out if you go behind the big buildings, they actually tore the buildings off of their foundations and dragged them back. And a lot of the bigger buildings in Moscow, in the back, they're being held up by like bricks. It's really unnerving how unsafe the whole city is. So the streets are very wide and you can't cross the street on a green light. You'll never make it. So they made tunnels so you can go under and those are connected to the subway. And the subway in Moscow, you go down in an escalator and you keep going until you think I, this is the, it just keeps going. Like this is so deep. This is really upsetting. Really? It's true. In Moscow, our subway is uh, deep enough, but in St. Petersburg, the most deepest, deepest uh, subway that you can find. St. Petersburg it is one more city in Russia, north city of Russia. But anyway, everyone hangs out in these tunnels. I went in the middle of December. I went to Russia in the middle of December alone. Christmas time. And I'm standing in the subway and I'm watching a violin player. And the one thing about Russia still today I think is that no one has any money. So when you see a guy playing the violin in the subway, he's like the first chair violin for like the Russian symphony orchestra because that doesn't pay shit and at least he can get a few kopecks in the subway. So I'm watching him and everybody these other people are sitting on the floor and we're crying everybody's crying. <laughs> Everybody, it's just normal. People are just watching, just wiping away tears. And there's a young fella sitting here, and he looked my age. I was 25 at the time. He looked about 25, and he was tattered and just watching this violin player. And then this group of kids walked by, about eight children, ranging from five to 10 years old, and their faces were dirty like you know, like an Oliver Twist, like they were in a play. <laughs> like they had rubbed dirt on their face. I want to say that uh, they were uh, pikes, fucking pikes, if you know. Uh, yes, it is type of uh, burglars uh, in, uh, in Birmingham or uh, Ireland or uh, England. Yes, pikes. Pikes, yes. One moment, I will translate it. Fucking pikes. I will translate Tsigani in Russian language. Gypsy. Gypsy, Romani. Yes, a member of traveling people traditionally living in it itinerant trade and fortune telling. Gypsies speak a language, Romani. A nomadic or a free spirited person. And they're all wearing men's coats. That they're wearing is like a dress, like, you know, from the neck down to the floor. And none of them have sleeves, their hands in their sleeves. Their sleeves are just flopping. They were like street urchin kids. Urchin? The... One moment, sorry. Urchin, what he means with that. Urchin. Urchin, urchin, urchin. Ah, I understand this kind of uh, a mischievous ch young child. Okay. Coats, it just looked like these men's coats. And you kind of knew all the men who owned those coats are dead. And at least one of these kids killed those guys. <laughs> like, I swear, I looked at an eight year old's face and thought, he has murdered. And that's what they looked like just tough little kids. And I could, I'd seen them before in Moscow, they work in groups. The guy sitting below me that I identified with called out to the head kid in the front. I don't speak Russian, so I just knew he was going, 
He's appealing to him. He needed something. And the kid with his hands in his sleeve looked at him suspiciously and said, like, what the fuck? Why? What do you want from me? And the guy went, explaining himself, and he showed that his shoe had come apart. And he showed... It is, uh, it is kind of people who tries to make money from you. Yes, uh, it is uh, gypsies, it is specific people who always ask for money. We have, we have them. And it is kind of uh, legalized by, uh, by specific corruption deals. Because they do, they, they have income, this kind of people, this type of uh, children. They have income and uh, like 45% of it they should give to police. And then it is uh, kind of legalized, legal. Okay. The, 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 his shoe was like a flap, and he showed the kid, but this, this, and he showed him his shoe, and the kid shrugged and said, this, this, like, okay. And the kid's hand appeared from out of the sleeve, and there was a, a tube of shoe glue in his hand. <laughs> he didn't rummage for it, it was already there. <laughs> and he handed it. Do you know, rummage? Rummage, what is rummage? Ah, oh, uh huh to the guy and the guy fixed his shoe with the glue gave it back and just do and then the kid from the other he took another his other hand had a paper bag and he put the glue in and he and he huffed it <laughs> and as I it is a toxician drugger toxician uh, smell drug drugger I don't know how to say correct it like uh, when you do cocaine, but it is with it, it is, uh, yes, it is uh, all about past. Like uh, 90s to 2005, we had this type of people, then people went to some of the shit of, uh, shit of, uh, whom? of cockerel. They use them here, somewhere, something like this. You may, you can find s people from, in your country, you can find people from uh, maybe Arabic countries, they use it a lot. Eyes rolled. Maybe you're, in your country, they use it too. Back, and he got high, and then the group kept going, and I couldn't believe what I just saw. <laughs> that the misery in this country at that time was so calculable and so predictable that... This guy thought, my shoe's broken. Oh, there's a child. He's sure to have some glue in his hand because the state of our nation is so wretched. And I looked, and he looked at me, and I, and I was startled, and then he laughed, and I laughed. And he's the only person I had any contact with in the whole of the Soviet Union. And I realized this is why I came here to find out how bad life gets and that when it's this bad it's still fucking funny that's all i got thank you yes in some moment i want to say that uh, some of uh, things that happen in our nation it is funny really maybe i will not find it in your country but in our country it is everywhere like uh, we don't have a big amount of rights but have a lot of duties and uh, it it means that uh, you will live here with some of funny experience thank you a lot for watching this video it was interesting to communicate with you through like uh, commentary com commenting this stuff i i want to say excuse me if you was uh, kind of uh, maybe upset that not upset i want to use word like some people get nervous because i stop 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 and uh, don't allow you to listen fully but uh, i think that uh, content of reactions it is more about like a communication with this stuff like it is not like a watching full stuff and after that commenting it is kind of with small portions watching and uh, like a what I have inside of my mind, what do I think about it and uh, then telling it. I think that's format uh, of reaction, it is what I said right now.
Okay, thank you a lot for watching and uh, have a wonderful day in Brussels daily and uh, have a funny have a funny experience. Yes, bye bye.